Hi, I'm Emma. Before I get into my story, please make sure to like and subscribe for more tales of life's unexpected twists. Lucas and I always dreamed of a beach wedding. We met right here on the sands of Monterey, not far from where the gentle waves kissed the shore, drawing patterns that only the ocean could design. We fell in love to the soundtrack of the sea, and it only felt right to exchange our vows in the very spot that witnessed the start of our journey. Imagine saying I do right there, with the sunset as our backdrop, Lucas would say, his eyes sparkling with excitement as we planned our special day. Each detail was chosen with care, the light blue and sandy beige color scheme, the delicate seashell decorations, and a local band that played soulful acoustic music. We should have a seafood buffet, fresh and simple, just like this setting, I suggested one evening as we walked along the beach, our hands intertwined, the wedding checklist in my other hand. Lucas laughed, squeezing my hand. And a barefoot dance under the stars. Can it get any more perfect? Every discussion about our wedding filled us with joy. We scrimped and saved every extra dollar from our jobs, Lucas as a graphic designer, and myself in marketing, putting aside $15,000 in a joint savings account. It wasn't just about the celebration. It was about building our future, starting with a day that reflected our shared values of honesty, simplicity, and pure happiness. Our wedding will be as real as us. No frills, just love, Lucas often remarked, and I couldn't agree more. The plan was set, our hearts were full, and every piece seemed to be falling into place for the perfect beginning to our forever. Little did I know, the foundation we were building on was about to be shaken, and the values we held so dear were going to be tested in ways I never imagined. The phone rang late one night, shattering the calm of our little apartment. I glanced at the caller ID and saw it was Mom. Her voice shook as she spoke. Honey, it's Dad. He's very sick. The doctors say he needs a treatment that we just can't afford. My heart sank. Dad had always been the invincible one, never even a cold. The desperation in Mom's voice was something I had never heard before. How much do you need? I asked, my mind racing through our carefully budgeted savings. It's a lot, Emma. Fifteen thousand dollars, she whispered, as if saying the number out loud made it all too real. The room spun slightly as I processed her words. Fifteen thousand dollars was our entire wedding fund, the money Lucas and I had saved for our dream day at the beach. I need to talk to Lucas, I managed to say, trying to keep my voice steady. Hanging up, I turned to Lucas, who had overheard the conversation. His expression was a mix of concern and confusion. We sat down, the weight of the decision pressing down on us. We can't just leave your dad in trouble, Emma, Lucas said, his hand finding mine across the kitchen table. If it's true, we have to help. But what about the wedding? My voice broke, the vision of our perfect day dissolving before my eyes. We'll figure something out. Maybe we can do something smaller, he suggested, trying to smile. The most important thing is we're together. The rest is just details. With a heavy heart, I called Mom back. We'll help, I said, trying to mask the turmoil inside me. You can use the wedding fund. The days that followed were a blur. Lucas and I hastily rearranged our plans, opting for a modest ceremony at a local family farm owned by one of his friends. It wouldn't be the beach wedding we dreamed of, but it would still be special, intimate, and filled with love. As I mailed the check to my parents, I tried to feel good about our decision. After all, it was family, and family sticks together. Little did I know, the truth behind the so-called medical emergency was about to come crashing down, and with it, my trust in the very foundation of what I thought my family was. The revelation came unexpectedly, at a family gathering meant to celebrate Ryan's recent wedding. Laughter filled the room, the air thick with the aroma of baked lasagna and sweet pie. I was passing by the living room when a snippet of conversation stopped me in my tracks. Really outdid yourselves with the honeymoon fund for Ryan and Jenna. Europe is quite the splurge, a distant aunt exclaimed, her voice tinged with both admiration and envy. Mom's reply was light, almost boastful. Oh, we wanted to give them something memorable. It was quite a stretch but totally worth it. A cold chill ran down my spine. My steps slowed as I processed the words. Honeymoon fund? Europe? The pieces clicked together in a dreadful alignment. I felt my breath catch as I stepped into the room, my presence halting the conversation. Where did the money for Ryan's honeymoon come from? My voice was calm, too calm, 
as I eyed my parents across the room. Dad's face faltered, a look of guilt passing over it briefly before he regained composure. Well, we... we had some savings set aside, he stammered, avoiding my gaze. Savings? I pressed, my voice rising. Or was it the $15,000 Lucas and I gave you for what, exactly? Dad's medical treatment that was so urgent? The room fell silent. The gravity of my accusation hung in the air, thick and suffocating. Mom looked at Dad, her face pale, then back at me, her lips parting as if to explain. Emma, we were going to pay it back, she began, her voice quivering. It was just that Ryan needed it more at the time, and we thought... You thought you'd lie to us? Use our wedding money without even asking? My anger boiled over, every word punctuated with a mix of disbelief and hurt. Do you have any idea what we had to give up because of that lie? Lucas, who had joined the fray, stood by my side, his hand tightening around mine in silent support. The betrayal cut deep, not just through our plans, but through the very trust I had in my family. Dad finally spoke, his voice defensive. We were going to sort it out, Emma. You have to understand, your brother. My brother got a dream honeymoon with my wedding money. I interrupted, unable to contain the bitterness. While Lucas and I scrapped our dreams for a lie. The argument spiraled, voices raised, old grievances aired, and in the midst of it all, the truth of my family's priorities became painfully clear. They had chosen Ryan over me, deceit over honesty. As the realization settled, so did my decision. This betrayal was not just about money. It was about fundamental values that had been shattered. Walking out that night, Lucas's arm around my shoulders, I knew things would never be the same. The family I thought I knew, the parents I thought I had, were not who they appeared to be. The trust we had was irreparably broken, and from those cracks, a new resolve had to be forged. Despite the whirlwind of betrayal and shattered plans, the day of our wedding arrived, a clear, brisk morning at the quaint family farm Lucas had found. The sun peeked through the leaves, casting a warm glow over the simple setup we had managed to pull together on our tightened budget. Lucas and I spent the early hours of the morning decorating. We draped white and soft blue fabrics across the wooden barn doors and scattered wildflowers in mason jars along the makeshift aisle. The simplicity of it all seemed to reflect our journey, a path not without its obstacles, but beautiful in its sincerity and strength. We did it, Emma, Lucas whispered to me as we stepped back to admire our work. His smile was my anchor, a reminder of what this day was truly about. Yes, we did. It's perfect, I replied, my hand finding his, giving it a squeeze. The reality was far from the lavish beach wedding we'd dreamed of, but in that moment, it felt just right, intimate, real, and ours. Our closest friends began to arrive their faces alight with joy and support. Among them were just a few family members, those who had stood by us through the recent turmoil. Their presence was a comforting reminder that family isn't just about blood, it's about who shows up when it counts. As the ceremony began, Lucas and I stood together at the altar, hand in hand, with the gentle rustle of the leaves and the soft murmur of our guests as our soundtrack. The officiant's words were simple yet poignant, touching on the themes of resilience and enduring love. Do you, Emma, take Lucas to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health? Until death do you part. I do, I said, my voice steady, my eyes locked on Lucas's. The weight of those vows felt heavier now, imbued with a deeper meaning after everything we'd endured. And do you, Lucas, take Emma to be your lawfully wedded wife, under the same promises? I do. Lucas replied, his voice rich with emotion, his grip on my hands tightening reassuringly. The exchange of rings was a symbol of our unbroken circle of trust and commitment, a physical manifestation of a promise that no hardship could tarnish. As we kissed, sealing our vows, the applause from our guests filled the air, mingling with the rustic charm of our surroundings. The reception that followed was a celebration not just of a wedding, but of overcoming, we danced our first dance on the grassy field under string lights, the stars beginning to twinkle above as the evening drew in. The music was a mix of our favorite songs, each one a chapter in our story. As the night came to a close, Lucas pulled me close, whispering in my ear, No matter what comes, we have each other. That's all we need.
and as I rested my head on his shoulder, looking out at the faces of our friends and the family who had supported us, I knew he was right. This day, this moment, was the start of something new, something built on truth, love, and an unshakable bond that no deception could ever break. The wedding had passed, leaving both joy and shadow in its wake. In the quiet that followed, as the decorations were taken down and the last of our guests departed, Lucas and I had time to reflect, really reflect, on all that had transpired. Sitting together on the porch of our small apartment, with cups of coffee warming our hands on a cool morning, we talked openly about the future and what it needed to look like for us. The betrayal by my parents and Ryan wasn't just a singular event. It was a revelation of long-standing patterns that could no longer be ignored. I've been thinking a lot about what family means, I started, the words catching slightly in my throat. And I've realized that sometimes family isn't about who you share blood with, but who shares your values and stands by you when it counts. Lucas nodded, his expression somber. I agree, Emma. It's hard. But cutting ties might be the only way to protect our peace and what we're trying to build together. It wasn't an easy decision. The idea of distancing myself from my parents and Ryan brought a mix of relief and immense sadness. But the more we discussed it, the clearer it became that to foster our mental health and the sanctity of our new family, boundaries had to be set. So we focus on us, on the family we choose to be, Lucas said, reaching for my hand. We build a life based on transparency, respect, and mutual support. Yes, I replied, squeezing his hand. And we make sure that the environment around us is one that nurtures and supports, not one that drains and deceives. We talked about our dreams, of maybe moving to a new city, starting fresh somewhere where the echoes of the past couldn't reach so easily. We envisioned a home filled with honesty and laughter, where trust was the foundation, not an afterthought. This isn't just about moving on from what happened. It's about moving towards something better, Lucas said his voice infused with a hopeful determination. And we'll do it together, every step of the way, I added, feeling the weight of the past start to lift, replaced by a budding excitement for what was to come. As we sat there, planning a future crafted on the lessons learned from hardship and the joy of shared dreams, I felt a deep sense of contentment. Yes, we had faced betrayal, but we had also discovered an unshakable strength within ourselves and our relationship. Lucas and I knew the road ahead would have its challenges, but as long as we walked it together, guided by the values we held dear, we would not just survive, we would thrive. This wasn't just an end to a painful chapter. It was the beginning of a new, brighter story being written with every choice we made, every boundary we set, and every dream we dared to chase. That brings us to the end of our story. Now, I have a question for all of you. Do you think Emma was justified in cutting ties with her family to protect her own mental health and the future with Lucas? Or do you believe there were other ways to handle the situation that might have preserved those family relationships? Drop your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. I really want to hear what you think about this difficult decision. And if you enjoyed this story, please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more thought-provoking content. Your engagement means a lot to us.